Hey friends, thanks for coming back to the channel. If you are hanging out with me, then maybe you were here for the last video in which we started creating a Razor app. Let me just enlarge this a little bit. Using C Sharp for the front end and the back end. So you're looking at this in your Visual Studio or Visual Studio Code uh, programming interface here. Uh, we got an API in the front end, but I'm not gonna focus on that today. We'll get back to that more in the next video. What I actually wanna talk about today is Git and source control. And so this is a problem that I've had in the past and I figured if I've had enough of a problem with it, maybe others have as well. I just couldn't find a whole lot of information about it, uh, specifically this online. I had to piecemeal this all together. So I just figured I'd put this all in one easy to grab uh, place for somebody to watch if they're having the same issues that I've had. So first and foremost, you're going to need to make sure you've got Git on your computer. So I already do, and the way you can actually test that is just open up a command prompt and say Git. And you should see all this stuff here, all these commands and whatnot. And with that being the case for me, then I have Git installed on my computer. So I'm actually going to shrink that down. And I've got a couple of these open. I don't need them all open. I'm going to close one of them. There we go. Now, if you don't have Git, then what you're going to want to do is go to this website, git-scm.com slash download. Uh, I'm in the Windows section, but it doesn't have to be Windows if you don't have Windows on your computer. Obviously, get the one that works best for you. Now, what we're going to be focusing on here is the Git CLI. There is also something called Git Desktop. If you have that installed that is helpful as well uh, but I've moved away from it in recent months because I know that a lot of enterprise and uh, just corporations companies in general don't typically use Git desktop while it is easy for us to do as hobbyists if you are a professional you don't really want to be using Git desktop a whole bunch you want to get yourself used to actual Git so when they say in a job application or a job description that you have familiarity with Git or other source control they really want to know that you can use the Git CLI that's more important so with that being said we're just gonna go ahead and click the download which I've already done it's right here Git open the file and then, of course, it will run the whole GitHub uh, install scenario thing. For me, I don't need to do that, so I'm not going to finish that because uh, I already have it. Instead, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to my actual GitHub. Yeah, don't worry about it. I'm going to go to my actual GitHub, right? And I'm going to create a new Git repository. All right, so I'm going to actually do this in two ways. The first way is going to be like the simple, easy way, like I'm starting fresh with no code whatsoever. So I'm creating a repository, and then I'm going to put the code in the repository later on. So this is going to be new repo. And you don't have to follow along with me on this one if you don't want to, especially if you were following with the video yesterday or last time. Uh, definitely don't worry about this portion here, unless, of course, you really want to get the practice, and that's cool. So I'm going to leave this as public. I'm going to say add a readme because I like to add readmes. And then I'm going to say for my git ignore template, I'm going to use Visual Studio because that's a pretty standard one when you're doing VS uh, Visual Studio type stuff. And no license for me, thank you. And create the repository. Ba boom! it should be done. There we go. All right, so now the most important part of this, or I shouldn't say the most important, but the next important part for this is I want to go to this main page for the repo. So you see I'm on that repo, new repo right there. I'm going to click on this green code thing, and I'm going to make sure I'm an HTTPS, and I'm going to copy this URL. All right, so now that I've got that URL copied, I can shrink that down. I'm going to go back to my, there we go, my CLI, all right? And then what I'm going to do here is I'm going to cd into my git repos directory. There we go. And then I want to just clone this repository. So I'm going to say git, whoops, git clone, and then just that URL. That's it. Just git clone and the URL. And what that's going to do is it's going to make a brand new folder in my git repository. Let me go back to it real quick. It's going to make a brand new folder in my git repos folder, I should say where the name of the folder that it's in will be the same as this right here where it says new repo so i'm just going to go ahead and hit enter and let that do its thing it should do it let me hit enter again because my computer is running kind of slow and boom there we go i just saw a jump and so somewhere in here yep new repo there we go new repo i've got to get ignore i've got a readme file so now what i would do here is i would create a new uh, 
project or solution within this folder. So like what we did in last video, I would make sure I CD into this folder specifically, and then I would create the solution and the project and all that stuff, and then I can push that to Git. And if you're wondering what pushing is, I will get to that in just a second. I actually want to jump into the next topic, uh, which is going to be what happens if I've already created code like this, but I don't have a GitHub repository for this on my computer and I want to push it to my GitHub repo online. Well, that is actually pretty easy and I'm going to show you how to do that right now. If you're anything like me, in the past you have opened up Visual Studio, you've started coding something, you're like, wow, this is really cool, but I want to be able to access it on the go because if you're like me, you might be a little nuts and you'll open up the GitHub app on your phone and read through your code while you're just sitting around at the DMV wondering what else to do with your life. Or maybe you're not. Whatever the case is, you want your code on the go, that's cool. There's, I'm not judging. I like it. You like it. We're all good. So I want to put this code on my GitHub repo so I can access this, but oops, how do I do that? Because I've run into issues in the past where it doesn't really match up and it's all kind of weird and stuff. Maybe you've had the same problem. So I'm going to show you how to fix that and get around it just in general, or just set it up. Maybe you haven't had that problem because you're not like me. Whatever the case is, we're going to go back to my GitHub here, and I'm going to go back to my repos. So here in my portfolio or my uh, profile repositories, I'm going to go new again. This one, though, I'm going to name it as I've named my file here, my solution, new web project. So I'm going to say new web project. There we go. And I'm not gonna leave I'm gonna leave a description blank for now. I'll still add a README and I will say Visual Studio for my uh, template. But a lot of times this gets overwritten, so it's not really a big deal. You can always add it later. So I'm gonna say create repository. So I've got that repository created. Now there it is. Cool. And I'm gonna do the same thing I did before. I'm gonna copy this HTTPS web URL. Alright, so I'm gonna shrink that down now because I don't need it. Okay, so here I am back in the Git repos, and this time what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually go to the, what is it, new web, let's see if that's the name of it, hold on, I can't remember what I called it back then, oh yeah, it was project one, that's what it was, so I'm going to say cd project underscore one, and then I'm going to say cd web, oh my goodness, what is in here? Oh, that's it. CD new. Let's see, I can't remember what I named these files when I'm like putting together random stuff for videos. I promise I'm not this disorganized in real life. This is just for this video. It's like I'm you're giving I'm giving you a rare treat here. Okay. Uh, so back here in the Git repos, let me get myself organized real fast and I'll explain to you what the heck I'm doing. Because you're probably like, why are you wasting my time with all this nonsense? And I'm like, I'm not wasting your time, I'm teaching you. And you're like, this doesn't seem like teaching. And I'll be like, you're right, it's not, but here we are back on track. So anyways, so I copy that URL and here I am within the folder of the new web project. You can see right here, this is where I'm at. So this is the visual version of it, the Windows Explorer version. Here I am in this uh, command prompt. So what I wanna do first is start with creating a Git repo in this spot here. So I'm gonna say Git and then I use get that out of the way, init or initialize to initialize a repo. All right, and I can see that a repo has been initialized by clicking on this hidden items thing. And I should see a .git file appear in this folder if my computer wants to cooperate. And see right now it's not responding because I'm just asking it to do too much. Look, like showing hidden items is a lot. There we go, so git. So a .git folder has been created and that means my git repository is ready to be put up into the cloud. So now that I've initialized it, I'm gonna say git add, and then, I'm sorry, git add, and then you can either use a dot here or you can use a dash A for all things. And real quick actually, to see if you have anything to add to this, you can type in git status, and then what I've got here is a bunch of stuff in red. And that stuff in red is stuff that has not been committed to my git repository. And I wanna commit it so that I can push it up to the cloud. So I'm gonna say git add, I'm going to say dash A, and that's going to add all of them. You can add things individually if you want to, too. It's I, I just find it's easier like just to make sure I don't miss anything. I add all of it every single time. So it's not like redundancy is okay. And then if I check git status again, those should be green. There we go. So there's all my green stuff there. That's going to be, oh, uh, there's a lot. 
that's going to be pushed up to the cloud basically that's every single file that's within all of those folders there minus the ones that are in the git ignore uh, or that should be in the git ignore if i i don't have the git ignore yet so that's okay we'll add that a little bit later on uh, but for right now so what i've got is i've added everything and my git status says that everything's added and ready to go so now i'm going to say git commit dash m and i'm going to say for my message first commit and this is i mean you can change it to whatever you want you can say initialize repo whatever uh, and so this git commit is basically taking all these files here that are green and committing them to the repository and then once i push it all of these files or this commit if you will will be pushed up to the repository so you can think of a commit as like a package so git commit basically takes all these things and packages them together and it labels that package as initialized repo and then hit enter and that should commit everything actually let me hit enter again there we go i don't know why it's been all finicky okay so i've successfully created my commit and it's ready to go now right now i can't push this to the repository because i haven't connected it to so this is how, where i connect it to everything so i'm going to say git remote which is what i'm referring to as the cloud add origin and then i'm going to add in here the url whoops it doesn't want to add right now but that's okay we'll go back and we'll recopy it we'll recopy this there we go add origin go back here whoops all right and then we're going to put it in quotes so it knows that it's in quotes there we go and then we're going to hit enter to add that origin and then you shouldn't get any kind of message or anything like that it's just ready to go now here is a tricky part that has always mixed me up in the past if you try and push right now with a git push and for those of you that don't know the git push command basically just puts it up on the cloud. It takes that commit, puts it up in the cloud, and it puts it to this URL right there. If I do git push right now, it's gonna fail. And it's gonna fail because of something silly. When I do git branch, right here it says that I'm on the master branch. All right, so you can think of GitHub as like a tree. The master branch is the branch that your main code is on. And then you can add branches by saying git branch and then call it something else like first branch there we go and now i've got two branches okay uh, right now i'm on the master branch hence the reason it's green and has a star by it all right but i can switch to the first branch if i want to uh, by using the git checkout command but i don't want to do that right now instead what i'm looking at here is the fact that i'm on the master branch no big deal that's my main branch the first branch would be where i would maybe switch to and do like I don't know, some trial and error stuff, testing of some new feature. And then if I can get it to work, then I transfer it back to the master branch when I'm ready to and I have permission from my superiors to add it to the main source, all right? Here's the problem though, is that if I go here to my actual, the repo that I made online, you'll notice that its branch is called main. And that is a problem. See, that is a conflict. And so when you go to push, this from your computer to here on the cloud, it's going to see that master is not the same as main and it's going to give you an error. And that error is super annoying to deal with. So to get around that, what we're going to do is we're going to change the master branch's name to main. So we're going to do that with the command git branch and then we'll say dash m and then we'll call it main. And now if I do git branch again, I have two branches, but the one that I'm on is now called main instead of master, all right? And so that's gonna make it a whole lot easier for us to push things up. And now I can say git push dash u origin main. And then that should push everything up to git. And give it just a second to figure itself out. Oh my lord, I don't know why it's telling me to do that. I'm already signed in, but that's kind of typically how things work. Whenever I am doing a video in the middle of it, it's like, oh, hey, oh, oops, I almost forgot. Yep, um, I'm actually gonna do this. I'm gonna say git push u and then f for force origin main. Okay, and so the reason I'm doing that is because right now on GitHub, I actually already have files here, which is, 
I know there's a way around this. I just can't remember it off the top of my head right now. Uh, if somebody wants to remind me what it is, put it in the comments. But basically, I've got files here, a gitignore and a readme already here. And what it's trying to do is it's trying to say like for it's trying to like push it up there. And it's like, wait, there's already files that exist that are older. Do like what's going on here? Things don't match. And so I'm telling it to force just overwrite. And that should work. Actually, I think the way to do it is to pull it, but I'm not going to do that right now. I'm just going to go ahead and push it, and I'm going to force it. And then that should force push everything up there. And I can always add a git ignore and a readme file later on if I want to. Now, you notice it's kind of pushing a lot, so you don't want to do this off of Wi-Fi, but that's fine, whatever. I don't, I'm on Wi-Fi right now. It's not a big deal. And then if I refresh this, there we go. There's my new project. So I've got my new project, I've got my API, I've got front end, and then here's my new web project solution. And see here I can add a readme. That's easy enough, no big deal, okay? Commit those changes, created the readme file, and there's my readme back in there, because I didn't do anything, no harm, no foul with that. And then as far as adding a git ignore, I can create a new file like this, and I can call it .git ignore I think that's what it's called right yeah dot git ignore I think it's just a git ignore file and then there we go and then commit those changes yep and then what I can do is I can copy the git ignore to this if I want to I open this up there is a uh, what's it called a um, if I do git ignore can't spell ignore templates there is a git ignore template for visual studio there we go and so i can actually just copy all of that from this to there if i want to or i can pull it as well that's another option uh, sometimes i find it's just super easy to like just copy it as it is um, but whatever so i can just say raw here or i can do a full copy from the other page Either way, I'm going to go back to here. I'm going to say edit this .git ignore file, paste all that in there, and then I'm going to commit those changes. There we go. Updated the git ignore file, and there we go. Done. And so now that that's updated with my new git ignore file and the new readme, I can come back to here and say git pull. And that will pull everything from there and bring it back down. So you can see I brought down the gitignore file and I brought down the readme. And if I go back to here, it should be in here. Yep, there it is, gitignore and readme. Boom, done. Cool. And so now I can say git status and everything's up to date. Everything's all set and ready to go. And so now anytime I make a change in my project here, let's just make a quick, real quick change. Let's just do some enters and then we'll save it and we'll come back here. If I do git status again, there we go. I should see the api.cs project is ready to be updated. And now I can just do a simple git commit with a message, don't forget the message. And I'm just gonna call this new commit because I'm super unimaginative right now. And then, oh, oopsies. I'm gonna say git add dash a or dot see this is why it's sometimes helpful with git uh, cli because sometimes it'll remind you like hey you haven't added anything you can't commit until you add and the github desktop uh, thing doesn't actually do that very well at least not that i found so now i can do git commit dash m and i'll say new commit because i still don't have an imagination and then i can say git push and then it'll push it and then with the new ignore file, it should ignore a lot of the extra boilerplate stuff. And now I've just pushed my latest commit. And that's it, the end. Uh, so hopefully you found this to be at least somewhat helpful and not too much all over the place. In the next video, we'll pick up with our project here, our web development application. Uh, if this is your first video watching, go back and watch the other one about how I put this together. And then we will pick up in video three and we're gonna add some cool stuff to this. I haven't decided what yet, but I think we're probably gonna be tackling like the API, uh, but more specifically getting the database all set up with mice or with SQL Server. So. I will hopefully see you in the next video, and thanks for hanging out. Tell your friends, and leave me a comment if you like the video or if you don't like the video. I would love to hear all kinds of feedback. All right, take care. Peace.